Hey guys, Carl Brown again for GuitarLessons365.com. Today we're going to finish our look at Rocket Queen by taking a look at pretty much the second half of the song, where the whole vibe just completely changes here. Uh, we're getting to a lot more major key sounding song, um, but and it's a lot easier. It's going to be a little bit of a shorter video, but it's got a cool guitar solo in it um, from Slash as well. So we're going to start here with this main riff. <laughs> All right, so it's going to start. Uh, we have Slash that does a different part over this. It's, it's very, very low in the mix. He's adding some fills, and I'll show you to that to you in a second. So we're going to start with the opening power E power chord, the low E in the in the bass, and then the power chord uh, off the A string, power chord of the second fret of the uh, A, and then up to four. So it is. And then, then just going to play uh, the double stops, four on the D and the G, and down to the six, to the sixes on the D and the G as well. So we have this. Then repeat. Uh, the E up top at least, hitting it three times. Then we have the open A, the first fret, and then the power chord. The D, uh, the B power chord. So it is. Repeat all that. Now Slash plays along with that riff, but adds a lot of little fills. It sounds like this. So we start the same. Now with that chord is sustaining. Kind of quick little hammer on three to four on the low E. And then hammer two to four on the A. And pick the four a few times. And then back to that hammer on between three and four on the low E. So this. So this. Then back up, start the riff over. So do the same riff as before. So as you're holding that B. So there's some bends there at the fourth fret on the A. And then the second fret bend and release on the low E. And then back. So the third time through, we just do the bend on the low E. A couple times, bend and release. And then back to the same riff, this time with no fill. So all together for Slash's part. Now from there we have a little clean guitar section here. Uh, and it's got a pretty nice little picking pattern to it, which actually changes slightly every time they do it. Um, and then it's usually always different live too. So I'm going to give you a, a nice version of it that's kind of uh, easier to understand here. And you can just play and it, it, it'll sound, um, it's kind of like really the first time he plays it on the recording. Um, and then you can just repeat it that way and it'll sound fine. So it sounds like this. Alright, so I just repeated it twice there. So we're going to start here up at the ninth fret on the G string. So ninth fret on the G, open high E string, then ninth on the B, and then back to the ninth on the G. Then you're going to hold the eighth fret on the G, seventh on the B, and what you're going to do. I'm oh, sorry. You're going to pick the G string, open E, and then the B. So this. Then you're going to take that down two frets. So it's sixth fret on the G, 
um, fifth fret on the B with the open high E string, and you're going to pick across this. Now what I did here is just picked three to two to one uh, across the G, B, and the high E string twice. And then you get, for the last time through, through, starting the third time, you're going to pick that same six on the G, but you're going to pick up the um, middle finger to have the open B on the B string afterwards with this. Now also listen for how some of the notes are held twice as long. So with this. It's right there. That note right there. All right. All, and then we're going to make it back up to the two nines here the, on the uh, G and the B. So we start ba basically start back over the same way. Now here, instead of going down to here, we're going to stay here and pick the 8 on the G again and hold it twice as long. And then pick the high E and then the B string there at the 7th fret again. Then you're going to pick 8 twice on the G string. So, so far we have this. Then you have the open B, so pick up your middle finger, and then open high E string, and then back to the 7 on the B. So it's a little bit confusing at the very end there. So I'll start it from the 9s there the second time through. And then you're just going to repeat both parts again and again. So this. Repeat. So it's a, it's a nice little section as soon as you get it down, and so you don't have to really think about it that much. But that little ending is a little bit confusing since it's not really kind of pattern based. All right, so now after that, we go back to the main riff again. So back into the... Uh, now, there's going to be some slight variations while they're playing. They might play a chord voicing and a and a, a, an octave up or whatever, but for the most part, it's just going to be that riff, main riff, without trying to get into the, all the tiny little details of it. Just play that riff again, all right? And you'll be fine. All right, then at the uh, 5 minute and 12 second mark of the song, we have Slash's main guitar solo. I'll play through that for you real quick, and then we'll take a look at it. So for Slash, at least, it's not that difficult of a solo, but it's got some really cool licks in it and a lot of pre-bends, so it can be a little bit tricky. So we're going to start here with some pre-bends at the 11th fret on the G string and kind of release them. So we have a couple of them. Pull off to nine. Let me just play the first phrase for you quick. So we have this. There's two pre-bends, release, pull off to 9, back to 11, and then a bend again, down to 9 on G, over 11 on the D string. So hold out with some vibrato, and then you're just going to slide up to 11 on the uh, A string. And then hammer 9, 11 on the D and the G. 
And then we're back to the second phrase. So that's just doing a couple of bends there at the uh, 11th fret again on the G string. And let that ring and release it down, so just release that bend, then play 9, and then we have this. Which is a quick bend and release at the 8th fret, kind of half step bend and release on the G string. And then plays 9 on the D and 9 on the A. All right, then we start back up. All right, so we kind of hammer on those 9-11s again. So we do the bends at the 11th now. Down to 9 on the G. Pulse that bend at the 12th fret on the B string. And then a pre-bend at that 11th fret on the G. Release. Down to 9 on the G. Then we have a pre-bend at the 12th fret on the B. And then a pre-bend at the 11th fret again on the G. And down to 9. So all together for that section. We're going to end it with this. So we have this little kind of quick little bend, it up, half step bend at the 11th fret on the high E string. Release, then 12 on the B, 11 on the G. And then that same ending we did before. That kind of half step bend and release the E fret down to those two nines. All right, now we get to the, he moves it up. So that's just some, start with some pre-bends actually. So we have these pre-bend at the uh, 14th fret on the high E string. So pre-bend, release, do a couple times, down to 12, back to 14. Quick bend, down to 12 on the E. Down to 14 on the B string. So we'll just need a little setup there. I got my the note is choking up. Over the 14th fret on the B, and then we have this. So that's a cool little lick there. So we have 12 on the G. Oh, I'm just starting the B string down to 13 on the G. And then you can pick 14 twice on the B string. Pull off to 12, down to 13 on the G again. So we have this. So. And then move over to the 12th fret on the high E string three times. Down to 12 on the, uh, on the B. And then once again, 14 twice on the B string. Pull off to 12 down to 13 on the G. My favorite part of the solo there. And then we're back to this next phrase. So let's make some bins at the 14th fret on the high E string. Pull up to 12. Kind of doing the bends between that and then going down to 12. Back to some bends. Back to 12. So just between those two notes, and then we're going to do this, which is a 14th fret bend on the B. Then 11, 14 on my high E string. Bend and release at the 14 on the B string. 12 on the B. Down to 13 on the G. Back to that 12. All right, now he has kind of a random, uh, kind of fast legato lick. So this sounds like this. Uh, 
All right, so now the easy way of thinking about this stuff is to first just practice this because he never plays it the same way twice. But he's just going down an E major scale. So let me just show you those notes. Um, 12, 11, 9 on the high E string. Then 12, 10, 9 on the B. Then 11, 9, 8 on the G. Now those are the main notes he's kind of just kind of messing around. So what I would do is just kind of practice the couple. Kind of your legato licks. And when you get down to the, work your way down to that eighth fret, just go all the way up. And that's basically what he does live. Starts with 9-11 there on the height. And into a bend all the way back up to that bend of the 12th fret. So that's just a better way of looking at it and try to, trying to break it down note for note which he would never do either. It's just not how that part is written. You just need to be able to play that style of legato and then just take it across three strings and back up. All right, and just kind of take your time getting down. Now I have some licks like that on, on the side if you need some help getting the your legato chops together. So when you get finally that 12th fret bend, it just goes 12, 11, 12, 11, a couple times on the high E string, down to 12 on the B, and 11 on the G. Then he goes back up, but he does this. He goes 11 on the G, 12 on the B, and instead of hitting the 11 on the high E string, he jumps to the 16th fret there on the B to play that same note. And then he does a half step bend. All right, now we get to the outro section here. Um, now this is just similar to the main riff of this second half, this really E section. Uh, slight difference, sounds like this. All right, so that just starts here with the um, the E power chord up top, and then we just take it down to sixth fret on the A string. So the sixth fret of the A with the ninth fret on the D, and then down to the uh, fourth fret there power chord, and then once again that four six double stop on the D and the G string, and then we're back to the top E chord, and then the same little thing. Kind of climb up on the A string to that B power chord, and then he just has those double stops that we did here, but the, the second fret and the fourth on the D and the G. So we just go two, four, two, four, two. All right, then we start back over down to that little sixth fret chord. Now this time we just start going down to the ending, the fourth fret power chord. Second fret, and the open A, down to the fourth fret power chord of the low E string. Kind of, um, uh, you're gonna just hit those a little bit slower. Some quarter note triplets, I guess. And then, and we're gonna have a big E chord. So. We have one of Slash's favorite little licks, which we're going to start. You can do it here. So where he kind of pre-bends the uh, up to the fourth note in the scale and then bring it down. So you can do this here. You can do it off of any G sharp, but it's just kind of bending up a half step, the 13th right there on the G string, and release.
And then we end it with a just with an E5 chord. All right, so there's a lot going on there, a lot of um, kind of dual guitar rhythm parts. Um, so if you have a second guitar player to play with, it'd be really fun kind of piecing it all together. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you again soon for guitarlessons365.com.